Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, welcome to 2 Kings chapter 23. There are 37 verses. In verse 1, there's an omission of, so they reported the word to the king. And then it says here, to himself gathered all the elders. The footnote reads, to his house. It's a specific location. Verse 23, confirm versus perform the words of this covenant. The word perform in Hebrew mean, means to arise, to fulfill, ratify, establish, and yes, to confirm. Verse 5, burned versus put down. Uh, which means to rest or to destroy. He put down. Okay, so it's the first uh, sentence there. Interestingly enough, it says here, Maseroth uh, versus the planets. And it says uh, constellations for the Hebrew, Mazalah. And the footnote actually... It reads, for the footnote, the 12 signs, and it says, see Job 38.32. Okay, so in Job 38.32, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but just to uh, do our due diligence, it says, Wilt thou reveal Maseroth in his season, and the evening star with his rays? Will thou guide them? So we can see who's really in control of everything, including the constellations and when they're supposed to come out, where they're supposed to appear, specific, you know, if they're fixed, pretty much, and for millennia, they've been fixed, and they go where they're supposed to go at their appointed times. So the Hebrew says Maseroth, the 12 signs of the zodiac, and their 36 associated constellations. So a lot of people... Me, myself included, I'm not very well versed into the Zodiac, but uh, there is a movement of people who acknowledge that uh, they have a scriptural foundation, but what happened is that a lot of the symbology of the Zodiac has been co-opted by pagan mythology such as Roman and Greek, so it's been Hellenized in a lot of ways, and obviously you see with the uh, horoscopes and Astrology, it's really taken a downturn for the worse. But when you come down to the foundation of it, it isn't, uh, the origin is not uh, bad. It really is from scripture. Okay, so that's verse 5. Verse 7, house versus houses. Uh, tents versus hangings. And the word for hangings is house or hangings. Eight, house versus high places. Ten, verse ten, son versus children. Um, okay, son of Hinnom, children of Hinnom. Right, okay. And then it says here, constructed for a man to cause his son versus uh, that no man might. So it's explaining the purpose, why this was constructed, uh, versus the intention is so that no man would, would do this again. Uh, and it says here, through fire to this name. And the footnote reads, in the fire. So no, no one's really going through the fire. They're not doing a magic trick and coming from one end and coming out the other end alive. No, they're going in the fire, and that's where... They expire. Verse 11, burned. Verses took away. Verse 12, forcibly remove. Verses break down. Verse 13, mount of... I'm not going to say that name. I suspect that is a false Elohim. And the word in Masoretic is corruption. Okay. 
verse 14. Utterly destroyed versus cut down. 15. Omission of high altar. And they also add place in regards to the high place. Um, and they also add the full, the high place right here, and the high place. So it's adding a, an additional location. In the Septuagint, it seems to be one location, which is uh, the high altar that he tore down. In the Masoretic, there is an altar and the high place. Whether it's describing the same place, I'm not sure, but we have to be open to the possibility. It could be describing two places. Verse 16. Turned aside versus spied. Or I should say turned himself. Turned himself. So turning aside means you you turn aside to a private spot. Uh, turning himself means he's turning around the other direction, a 180. City versus a mount. Okay, I don't see city. Oh, here, city and mount. Um, there's an omission of when Jeroboam stood by the altar at the feast and he turned and raised his eyes to the tomb of the man of Elohim. 17. Mound versus a title, and title means monument. Uh, and it says, uttered these imprecations, which he imprecated upon the altar of Bethel. An imprecation is a curse. It is the act of invoking evil upon anyone. A prayer that a prayer that a curse or calamity may fall on anyone. Um, verses proclaimed these things. Okay, that is quite different. I'm going to say that that is a significant difference at the very least. Uh, the men of the city said, Thus and thus, the man of God that came out of Judah uttered these prayers of cursing. Interesting. And then it says, Which he imprecated upon the altar. So this is the man of God clearly describing his actions versus that you have done. Proclaim these things that you have done against the altar of Bethel. I mean, technically he did do what was spoken, but that's not what was written in the Septuagint. So he basically fulfilled, he did fulfill what was said, was spoken of, according to the Masoretic anyway. Verse 19, in addition of according to, according to, which makes more sense in the Masoretic, in all honesty, because when this word is added, he did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. When we read the last section, it says, and did to them all that he did in Bethel. It still makes sense. It just makes a little more sense to me in the Masoretic, just from an English, English point of view. Verse 20, sacrificed versus slew. Verse 22, for a Passover such as this, had not been kept from the days of the judges, etc. Versus, surely there was not holden such a Passover from the days of the judges. So one is saying, the Septuagint is saying, it is a fact, this is a fact, this has not been done since that time. The Masoretic is making an educated guess that well, surely there has not been one like this. A confident guess. Verse 24, Theraphine versus images uh, that had not been set up, or that had been set up, rather, that had been set up versus that were spied, that were seen, and then that he might keep the words of the law versus that he might perform the words. So it's one thing to keep the words, means you're doing it from a physical standpoint, also a spiritual point, you're really fulfilling the words, uh, not... You're guarding the words too, not merely performing it from a outward superficial perspective and you would not be fulfilling the spirit, the spiritual intent of the, of the law. 
Okay, uh, footnote reads to establish or confirm the words. So that is even more uh, stronger, I think, that language. 25, what a testament and tribute to the great King Josiah, who followed after his fathers, Hezekiah, Jehoshaphat, Asa, and King David. So let's read it. Talking about King Josiah again. Um, there was no king like him before him who turned to Hashem with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength, according to all the law of Moshe. And after him, there rose not one like him. Amazing. Verse 27. Reject. Verses cast off. In regards to the city, Jerusalem. Uh, verse 30. An addition of in a chariot. Verse 33. Removed him to Rablam versus put him in bands. And we see a, a much different uh, tribute being collected here in regards to the gold. It's a hundred talents of gold versus one talent of gold, a talent. Uh, you could say that's a big difference, especially if you're the one paying it. So I'm going to say that's a big difference. It's 100 Bitcoin or one Bitcoin. You take your pick. Verse 35, regarding the assessment done. Assessed the land versus taxed the land. Then gave uh, versus he exacted. Assessment versus taxation. And taxation means an estimation or evaluation. And lastly, I just bring up this name because I found it was widely different. Jeldaf or Yeldaf versus Zabuda. So that's all for this chapter. Thank you very much for your time. Till next time, I bid you all shalom aleichem, assalamu alaikum, irini mazisu, paxo biskum, peace be unto you, and maranatha.